Um, I've been looking up things on these songs, you know, just because I thought it's kind of interesting to have a little history on the song, who wrote the song, where the song come from, who first recorded it. Uh, to me, that stuff's kind of interesting. Maybe not to everybody, but um, I, I like it. So I was hoping that maybe people would. Um, this week, I ran into a song that I've been playing since I was eight years old, seriously. It's one of the first songs I learned to pick out on a guitar. And um, in fact, I was about eight years old. <laughs> and it's an old blues song. It's called um, the St. James Infirmary Blues. And sometimes it's just called the old St. James Infirmary. And sometimes it's called the Gambler's Blues. Well, that tells you right away that this is not the normal song when they got AKA, AKA, AKA after the song. You know, it's also known as this, known as that, known as that. It means the song's been around quite a while. I had no idea. This song has been around since the 1700s. St. James Infirmary. That song originated with a song that was a British Army song back in the mid-18th century, the Red Coat Army. And um, in those days, it was called the um, Unfortunate Rake, or, in other word, the Unfortunate Lad. And it was about an, a soldier in the British Army who had a, a friend also in the army, and they were great friends. They were very close friends. And his friend was um, very handsome, very dashing, very brave, a very accomplished soldier, and uh, very well liked by everybody in the whole army. He had a few personality quirks. One of them was that he liked to take every spare farthing he could get his hands on and spend it on prostitutes. Well, <laughs> that's, you know, from a, from a, uh, an infectious disease standpoint in the 1700s, that was not a good idea. And sure enough, he caught some terrible, uh, we call them now STDs. And so he caught some terrible STDs, and in the mid-18th century, they didn't have any way to really treat those. Um, they tried some treatments. The treatments were worse than the disease. So what they would do <laughs> in merry old England in those days is they would lock you up with the lepers, which meant that you would die a horrible, miserable death in a leprosorium. So the song originated with this soldier going down to what was called then the lock. Yeah, like me, the lock. Only the lock didn't mean the lock here. It meant the lock, as in lock up. The hospital, as far as I was able to, cons to determine, did not have a formal name. It was the South London Leprosorium, and it was in Southwark, which is part of Southern London. I found out that that's probably not the best end of town, to say the least. So anyway, this poor soldier, he can't find his dashing, handsome friend. So he goes running around all over the place trying to find his, his comrade. And he goes down to the lock. And there is the unfortunate rake, wrapped in a woolen blanket in the middle of summer. And um, turns out he is dead. Dead of his STD. And he's as dead as all the lepers he's in there with. And um, it's, it's a very sad and moving song. Well, unfortunately, that kind of sad and moving song with that kind of story line uh, just doesn't really make it all that well in polite company, if you know what I mean. So 
<laughs> the song the song failed to go anywhere as the unfortunate rake or the unfortunate lad. And it sort of disappeared during most of the 19th century. But somewhere around the turn of the 20th century, someone rewrote the song. Uh, someone rewrote the song to um, be about a guy looking for his sick wife. And he finds his sick wife in the St. James Infirmary. Well, evidently, the song was just kind of on the blues circuit. And it was being played here and there. It wasn't going anywhere. There were two recordings of it made in the early 20s. Neither one of them ever sold any. Until a guy named Louis Armstrong recorded the song in 1927. He made it famous worldwide with his recording of the St. James Infirmary Blues. And that really set the tone for the song. Everybody, I don't care who you mention, every recording artist who is anybody has a recording somewhere in the back of their closet or somewhere of the St. James Infirmary Blues. Um, Eric Clapton did the St. James Infirmary Blues. And um, they're just, I mean, it's anybody you want to know. The animals did a recording of the St. James Infirmary Blues. Everybody recorded the St. James Infirmary Blues at one time or another. Um, my favorite is uh, is if you look on a, uh, uh, back in, in YouTube, and you go to Betty Boop, there's a Betty Boop movie uh, called Snow White. And if you go on that movie, the sound track to that movie is by Cab Calloway, the great jazz singer. And Cab Calloway, the only soundtrack on it is the St. James Infirmary Blues. And it's it's really cool. So, um, let's see if I've got any other cool notes here. The, the, the song has been attributed to um, being written by Joe Primrose, who's also known as Irving Mills, but uh, that's been pretty well blown away. And uh, he doesn't, he, he really took, uh, denied ever having written the song. He just picked it up off the blues circuit and put his name on the sheet music. Now, the other interesting thing is, uh, I learned the song, by the way, from a recording by um, a guy named Phil Harris. Uh, many of our parents or grandparents might remember Phil. Phil was a guy from Ohio uh, who was basically known as being a normal Ohio guy. He was a foot soldier in World War II, come on from the war, Popped the top of beer, loved beer, loved cigarettes, loved to eat, and loved to sing, and uh, tell funny stories. And that's how he made his living, singing, telling funny stories. Phil became obsessed with New Orleans, and I, I am too, frankly. And he spent a lot of time in New Orleans, and uh, he really loved the culture down there. He loved the people down there. He, he got to where he could speak Cajun pretty well. And, and did very well down there in New Orleans. And he, he did a lot of New Orleans songs. And I use his version of the St. James Infirmary Blues as opposed to the 1927 version that Satch did or the 1933 version that's in the uh, Snow White movie by um, Betty Boop. But I think you'll get a kick out of watching that Snow White movie if you want to. Now, all these years, because I was eight years old when I first, like I said, when I first learned to do this song, because it's a real easy song to play. Uh, anyway, there ain't no St. James Infirmary. That, when I read that, that was so cool. There ain't no St. James Infirmary. From the time I was eight years old, I pictured that somewhere, I don't know, New York, Philadelphia, Atlanta, somewhere, there was, or maybe New Orleans, there was an old 
dirty, overcrowded, overworked, understaffed hospital called the St. James Infirmary. And that, uh, that you might even be able to go in there and see the room where this guy found his poor dead wife so many years ago. And <laughs> it doesn't exist. There never was one. Nobody knows where St. James came from. There used to be a St. James Hospital in London, but it was torn down in 1535 by Henry VIII. And Henry VIII, by the way, is considered the father of modern medicine because he got rid of most of the quacks. He set up medical schools. He set up a required curriculum of education to be a physician. And he started setting standards for licensure and uh, to, that you had to maintain certain standards of practice in order to call yourself a physician and treat uh, physical ailments in people. So how cool is that? When the thought of Henry VIII as being the, being the, the father of medicine, It is a sad song. I have loved this song since I was eight years old, folks. Ladies and gentlemen, the St. James Infirmary Blues, Phil Harris edition. I went down to that old St. James Infirmary. I heard my baby moan I felt so broken hearted It used to be Stetson had 
put a $20 gold piece on my watch chain, yeah, so the boys will know I died standing past. Ready. <laughs> I think you can see why it might have been kind of a sensation among my parents' friends. They have some eight or nine year old kid with a little small guitar playing that song. Boy, that was. <laughs> anyway, that was it. <laughs>